Hi everybody, in this video we're going to continue with the Physics 2D. We're going to start talking about the um, platformer effector. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to this left ground. We're going to click uh, Physics 2D and then we're going to go to Platform Effector 2D. Now we have to click Use by Effector on the Collider and its Trigger. Well actually not its Trigger. When it's, an when it's a Platform Effector, we don't not need its Trigger, the other ones we do. Now we could use a collider mask or we could have uh, collisions with everything. For this, we're just going to use the collider mask. We could have, if we go to our scene, we could have the offset, so the rotation of the actual collider. We could have one, one, one way enabled or disabled. Let me show you how enabled looks like. So when we have one way enabled, so the right ground doesn't have any platform effector. So let me go over here first. And as you can see, I just bump into it. Now let me go into this one. And as you can see, I go right through it and land on the other side. So if I do it again, go through it, land on the other side. So one more time, same thing, okay. Now, if we have this unchecked, it's the same thing as if, as if we just had a collider pretty much. Unless you wanted to use this little sides section where you could use friction or bounce. But as you can see, it just collides just like this one. So same thing. And then uh, one way grouping, so let's say Instead of using um, this big collider right here, let's say each of these individuals had a collider of their own. We could use uh, one-way grouping, which would use all the colliders in the in the you know parent-child family or class, and it would use them as um, as one way. So if you would go through here, it would work. If you would go through here, it would work. And if you wanted to have it a little more accurate, and then surface arc. So this is the uh, the actual arc of the collision. So let's say if we had it at 359 or 360 which is a complete circle now it also acts even though use one way is checked it's still going to act as a collider as you can see now we can also uh you know shrink this if we want so there's only like uh let's say like a little certain area where you could go through so let's say if we hit play or actually it's, it was supposed to be the other way so let me it's supposed to be this way so now we have just like a little small area now it still works actually well right here it kind of don't but yeah that's pretty much what that uh, surface arc is and then sides if you want to add friction to this or if you wanted to add a bounce to the actual side arc and you could increase the side arc here so let's say you will use bounce instead of friction so now if we well it's supposed to when we hit the side we bounce off i think you might need a physics uh material 2d for that to work um, but that's what uh this little section is all about so that would be it for the platform effector 2d now we'll go back to physics 2d and we'll go to the point effector and actually we're going to add the point effector on one of these objects right here so i'll leave a link to all the assets that i used i pretty much used three assets i used this one the 100 alchemy items icons free which is 1.3 megabytes. I used Pixel Bird and, uh, and then I used another one. So uh, give me one second and I'll show you. So I also got this one, Landscape Tiles and Birds Free by Ken and G, uh, 363.5 kilobytes, released 2017. It supports 2017.1.0 and higher or higher. And uh, let me check the other one that I also downloaded, the other free asset. So the other free asset that I am using is the 2D demo character sprite sheet by IOV and it's 9.7 megabytes. It was released on 2019 and five, the supported Unity versions are 5.3.2 or higher. So as you can see it has idle, jump, run, walk, death, slide, sneaking, and sit down. So uh, I'll leave links in the description so you guys could check them out if you want to download them. But back to the video. Uh, for the dust particle, we're gonna or the dust, we're gonna add the um, physics 2D point effector 2D. Now remember, we need a collider, so we'll add the box collider just to make it simple, and we'll shrink this down real quick, which we really don't need to because we're gonna make it as trigger. So now we could uh, use by effector and click as trigger, and now if we hit play, if I am correct, oh no. What we should do actually before we even hit play is I was using two box colliders for my player. Uh, actually I changed it. 
So now I put a polygon collider. And now when I hit play, it should work. So what the point effector does is when uh, this magnitude is set to a negative number, when it is set to a negative number, it uh, attracts whatever is it within the collider, it attracts it to it. If it's at a positive number, it will push it away from the collider. So as you can see, it did attract it to the, to the actual cloud. If I set it to, let's say 20, it's gonna push the player away. As you can see, it pushes them away. We can add variation. So at times it'll push me further than at other times. So as you can see, last time it pushed me all the way down here. This time it pushed me over here. And now it, this time it pushed me over here. And now this time over here. So as you can see, there's variation. We could have distance scale. So um, it would pretty much be the magnitude plus the scale of, uh, or multiply by the scale of the distance. So let's say we have negative 20. And now, as you can see, we're, we got a bunch of distance with us. If I set it to 50, as you can see, there's more of a rocky motion now. If I set it to 500, even get that, well, we're supposed to get more of a rocky motion. But uh, yeah, and that's pretty much that. And then the force source, so where, where the source is gonna be coming from. So for this instance, since I don't have a rigid body on this game object, it's taking the rigid body from the player and applying force to its own rigid body. But I could set it to this collider and it will apply force to the player's rigid body. So as you can see, let me actually add this so we can get pushed away, as you can see. And uh, we can make it constant or inverse linear. So inverse linear, as you can see, nothing happens. It inverses uh, the numbers. So it kind of, we could have variation. Yeah, I don't really do anything with it. And we could have inverse squared. And the same thing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what these would be. I know constant, it's just constant force. So for dampening, um, this is drag. So let me show you. If I go to it, it just pushes me away. Let me take the variation away. So as you can see, it just pushes me away. If I add drag to it, it gives me air resistance or some sort of weight so it don't push me as far as you can see. And yeah, that's pretty much that for the point effector 2D. So you just add whatever colliders you wanted to be affected. If you wanted to be affected by everything, just you know, click this. Uh, force magnitude, how strong you want the force to be. Force variation, if you want it to vary between forces. Distance scale, if you wanted to have um, more of a distance between each other, it kind of multiplies, I think, this one uh, by the actual magnitude. So it says it changes, it checks the distance between the source and the target, but it does not change the actual range the effector works as. This is controlled by the collider. So if you wanted it to have more of a range, you would just have to, you know, increase this collider like that. And then uh, that should work. And then there's force source, so where the source is coming from, the, uh, the source of the force, where the target is of the force. So what the force is targeting and what mode. Drag is just the air resistance. Now if I hit play, so you guys could see that what matters is the collider and not this distance scale. So when I get close to the collider, which is a couple blocks from me, as you can see, it pulls me in right away. So let me jump over and you can see the collider is the one that actually brings me towards it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the point effector. The last one I'm gonna be talking about is the polygon collider. So physics 2D, uh, polygon collider 2D. Now, as you can see, it kind of try to match the shape of these, uh, this dust. When you click edit collider, you could edit the collider to fit the shape a little better or to change the shape of the actual collider, however you want it to be. So as you can see, you could add points. Uh, you could move existing points that already exist. Um, you, you pretty much have full control of this polygon collider. So you can make any shape you want or you need. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. And then there's material. So if you want to add a physics 2D material, uh, like I said before, you just uh, right click, go to create, go to uh, 2D, physics material 2D, and then you could just, you know, drag that in uh, to the dust cloud. You just drag it in and that's how that's done. I'm going to talk more about it, about what friction is, bounciness is, what they're used for in the later video. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to be talking about this. Is trigger, is trigger, if it passes through this collider, you can make it do something through code or script. 
and uh, when this is triggered nothing will be able to bump into it it will just go right through it so any game object will just go right through this uh, used by effector you have to have this checked on if you're going to use one of these effectors except for uh, well, which one was it I think it was the platform effector 2d that one don't need to be uh, is triggered but uh, other than that you have to use used by effector and have this to have an effector work used by composite that's another collider so you could you could go to the physics 2d or just type in composite collider and as you can see now with the composite collider it adds a, a rigid body 2d so just keep that in mind and then you could click use by composite and if you look at the the actual collider it actually removes the edges between uh, the, the the bounds of the colliders so it uses less memory on the the computer or on the platform you're deploying to so you could also have um, auto tiling and then once you have used by composite I talked this about this in another video you could adjust these first text distance uh, the shape uh, the edge radius you could have a synchronized or manual you can have outlines or polygons so you can have those lines again and then you can have auto auto tiling so it automatically tile into a grid system and then there's offset so you could you know move the actual whole collider uh, up and down left and right uh, there's points so if you want to see all the little points you have in your collider this would be a point that's another point another point all these little green dots are points so I could actually adjust it like this as well so as you can see I'm moving the collider and I could subtract collider or paths or edges by you know typing a smaller number and then hitting the the edit collider and then you know just moving it all around so if I wanted to use you know something with less collider or less edges and you know not so detailed you know I could do that that way it's not as taxing on the computer or on the you know device you're you are exporting to or building on so as you can see now this is a lot less than it was at first you can see that there's no more uh, lines going through at least not as much and then uh, there's also info info it just tells you uh, the information of your frictionness your bounciness the shape count the bounds so where the center is at so if I adjust that you can see that the center is changing the extent is changing same with the y when i'm editing um these the you can see the extent changes down here same with the x and uh yeah that's pretty much it for the polygon collider 2d if you guys learned something if you guys are liking this video so far hit that like uh, button it'll mean a lot to me it'll keep me motivated keep me going making all these videos uh hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this if you're enjoying this content uh, also hit that a bell notification that way you get notified as soon as these videos come out I'll be one of the first ones to get notified I also have a website I talked about it before robust-games.com where I'm gonna be posting free assets for now I got free sprites I got some free um, free sound effects free codes I was gonna put free 3d models but I wasn't able to on that website so I'll probably just leave a link on that website to direct you to my itch.io page where I'm gonna start uploading uh, 3d models so far I just uploaded one tree just to kind of test the uh, test it out uh, but I'm gonna be uploading more stuff uh, within these next couple of days so once again thank you